Welcome to the introduction to the GDTF Builder video series. This is the first of three videos that will help you get up to speed on the GDTF Builder and its basic user interface. The videos will cover the common parts of the Builder that are used no matter what type of GDTF you are creating. Each of the sections in this video will cover a specific part of the process of accessing the GDTF Builder and how to use its interface. The Builder is a specialized interface that enables you to create GDTFs for a variety of different types of devices used in the live events and entertainment industry. You can define all aspects of your GDTF using the Builder, including basic info, its 2D and 3D geometry, and the behavior of the device. One important thing to remember is that the Builder includes only limited 3D modeling capabilities. So if your device geometry is complex or detailed, it's better to import the geometry from another application. No matter what type of GDTF you are creating, the basic file format is the same, a zip folder containing the files that together define how the device looks and behaves. You can manually inspect any GDTF by renaming the .gdtf to .zip and opening it with an archiving app. The description XML documents the behavior of the device, its thumbnail will be a PNG or SVG file. Globos use PNGs and 3D geometries use GLB. To access the builder, go to the gdtfshare.com website. At the top of the screen are links to the various different sections of the website. Let's quickly go through these. The first two options, entertainment professionals and manufacturers are broadly similar. Both link to pages that have account creation and login prompts at the top with useful resources, information, and links further down the pages. The main difference between the two is the targeting of the info and the links. The Entertainment Professionals page is targeted at end users, whereas the Manufacturer page targets GDTF creators and device manufacturers. Find Fixture opens the share database so that you can find and download the GDTFs you need for a particular show or design. Use the Build Fixture option to open the builder. Both the Find Fixture and Build Fixture links require that you log in if you haven't already done so. Learn about the history of GDTF in the About section, which includes a link to the historical timeline of MVR and GDTF. Next are links to the FAQ and to a contact form for the GDTF group. And lastly, are the direct login and account signup buttons. It doesn't really matter how you choose to log in or create an account, you will land on the same dialogues. So let's hit the manufacturer link first. Here we can either log in directly or go to creating an account. We'll select login. The login dialog also includes a link for creating a new account, which opens up the same dialog as if you went directly to create a new account. And this can also be accessed directly from the entertainment professionals or manufacturers pages once you have logged in, you'll be sent back to the landing page. Let's hit the build fixture link to access the builder. This opens the builder's start screen. Here you are presented with a number of options for creating a new GDTF or editing an existing one. First on the left-hand side are a set of standard templates that can be used as a starting point. Each contains some basic info in the summary page, a set of basic 3D geometries in the geometry page, and some very basic default DMX attribute configurations, such as a dimmer for the conventional or pan tilt for a moving head template. Below this are the options to start from a completely empty GDTF or from where you left off in your last session. Though a word of warning, this is not a substitute for saving your progress regularly. On the right, you can edit an existing GDTF by uploading it from your computer. The link to the GDTF share enables quick access to the share to locate and download an existing GDTF so that you can edit it. Let's take a quick look at the moving head template to see what is included. In the fixture page, it has the name fields filled with default content and the type ID has been created. In the geometry page, there is default geometry for a moving head, including the base, the yoke, head and beam. We'll go into a lot more detail about the geometry page in the next video. The base displays that it has a DMX mode linked to it. So let's open the DMX page. Here you can see that a very basic DMX profile has been set up to control the dimmer, pan, and tilt attributes of the light. It's important to note that no other attributes or pages have been configured as part of the template. Since we're already in the builder, let's go back to the fixture page. 
and look at the parameters and layout of the page in more detail. At the top of the page is the menu or link bar, which is always accessible no matter which page of the builder you're on. From left to right are the home button, which takes you back to the start page. Then you have undo and redo buttons, the name of the GDTF, the back page shortcut button, and links to each page of the builder. You can access the summary of the device. There's a next page shortcut button. And then you've got links to GDTF share site and a save to share button. The last thing that we covered in this video is the fixture page. On the left hand side is the information describing the fixture. On the right is the thumbnail section. So let's start on the left hand side. The first thing before we actually go into any details is to note the small gray circular buttons with an eye inside them. These are the tooltips for each field and are used throughout the builder. The tooltips will open automatically whenever you hover your mouse over one for a second or two. Once the tooltip is open, you will sometimes see another similar blue icon inside. This is a link to more detailed information about the parameter or feature. Click on the link to activate it. The top two fields are manufacturer and name. The combination of these two fields is used to name the GDTF file in the builder. The long name is the full manufacturer's name of the device, and the short name is the shortest possible name for the device that is easily recognizable. Type ID is the global unique identifier of the GDTF file. This is primarily used by software internally and not generally visible or used by the end user. This will be automatically generated by the builder when you first start a file, but a new global ID can be created by hitting the circular reset arrow at the right hand side of the field. Link your GDTF to another by referencing the other device's global identifier here. Next are the RDM fields, including the manufacturer's unique RDM ID and the device's own RDM model ID, both of which need to be obtained from the manufacturer. Define whether the device has other devices attached or mounted to it with the can have children toggle. Enter a description of your device here. This can then be referenced by other software. You can define the device's operating temperature range in centigrade. Set the device's weight in kilos. And the length of any legs as measured from the floor to the bottom of the base plate. The top right section of the fixture builder is used to define your device's thumbnail image. You can use either a PNG image file or a 2D SVG graphic. If you choose to use an SVG file, the XY offsets enable you to correctly align the image. That brings us to the end of this video. The second video in this series will look at the geometry page and how geometry defines the type of device you are creating.